Hello and welcome to this final video on our course on mobile data collection using the Kobo toolbox. I am Wilfred Ngwa for the EpiGuida channel. In our previous videos in this course, we have looked at how to design both simple and advanced forms using the Kobo toolbox online form builder and XLS forms respectively. If you have gone through all the course videos, you should be a Kobo expert at this point. Today, we will focus on how to plan a good mobile data collection project. So what are we waiting for? Let's begin. One thing I would like to stress on is the fact that no matter how good your Kobo forms may be, if your mobile data collection process or project is poorly planned, then you might have spent time and energy just to achieve a failed project. Permit me at this point to walk you through the essential steps in setting up your mobile data collection project based on my real life experience on a survey conducted in two health areas in North Kivu DRC. This project was conducted in French and is entitled Enquête sur l'accès aux soins, la malnutrition, la mortalité et la violence, translated into English as Survey on Access to Care, Malnutrition, Mortality and Violence. I have the reference to this project in the comment section of this video. The conception or conceptual phase is probably one of the most important phases when it comes to planning a good mobile data collection project. This is the initial phase of any research or survey and involves the intellectual process of developing a research idea into a realistic and appropriate research design. The research idea might be developed by you or any other person. In the case of this project, the research idea was already designed and we had a task to implement the study. The goal of the study was to estimate the crude mortality rate for the total population and for children under five years of age in the Nyabyondo and Mahanga Health Districts in North Kivu DRC. At the level of the office and with some consultations in the field, we ensured that we went through the project document or survey protocol. This permitted us to one, fully understand and get clarifications on the primary objectives of the survey. Two, fully understand the survey methodology to ensure that it is suitable or adapted to attaining the survey objectives. Three, access the availability and quality of resources both human and material. We wanted to know if we could get the type and quality of smartphones we needed. Secondly, if we could have the quality of human resource we wanted. We had some interesting findings here. We were told that enumerators had already been identified by community leaders from the communities in which we'll be conducting the survey. This is usually a requirement as a part of community engagement. On conducting checks with the field, we realized that most of the identified enumerators did not have experience with using smartphones and the enumerators were aged between 25 and 45. Elsewhere, all of them could read and write, and six of them had some experience as enumerators, but only with using the paper pen method. Four, have an appreciation of the accessibility of the terrain and the main language spoken. We listed out all the clusters of villages we had to go to and verified with field teams how long it could take our enumerators to get there. What means of transportation is feasible as well as if there are any security concerns for the field teams. Five, have a look at the design questionnaire. We went through question by question to ensure that we had an understanding of each question and that the questions asked would permit us to answer the research questions. When we had all these checked and had a degree of certainty that mobile data collection could be used for the project, then we went ahead to have our questionnaire configured in Kobo. We had the configured forms tested by some members of our team just to have some feedback on things we might have missed. Note that this is not the same as a pilot. You can call it a pre-pilot phase and this is not a must.
This is the phase where you want to make sure you come up with a clear plan that has all the fine details regarding the implementation of your project. We came up first with a plan of activities, which includes the activity, start date, and end date. We made sure all survey supported documents were verified, printed, and filed. Documents to be used for training and the pilot study were separated from documents to be used during the actual implementation. Since the survey was in a rainy season, we wanted to make sure that raincoats and boots were available for each team member and that identification shirts were also available. Smartphones were also checked to be all functioning, chargers available and functional. We went ahead to develop training content for the enumerators and had it ready. We came up with a detailed daily plan for enumerator teams and drivers. We had 10 teams of enumerators made up of three persons, a supervisor and two enumerators. Each team had two plans and each member was to have a copy. The first plan, which is the daily activity plan for teams, had the name of the team, the name of the village the team had to interview, the cluster number, the survey date, and the number of households the team had to interview per day. The second plan, which is the daily plan for vehicles and motorbikes, had the name of the team, the time of departure, the date, the number of the car or motorbike to be used, and the person to use it. We also made sure that a place is identified where the team members who did not come from the communities will stay. This place had enough parking for the cars and motorbikes and had storage space for all study materials, including points to charge all phones daily. We made sure we had clear information on the modalities of payment for each member of the team. We included a slot during the training of enumerators where the financial team had to brief our enumerators on modalities of payment. We also made sure that we had clear information on the security concerns for enumerators and supervisors. A slot was also assigned during the training of enumerators where the logistic team had to brief the teams on security related issues. Once we had our microplan clearly made, we were now ready for the field. No matter how good you think your firm is or how organized your microplan is, it is highly recommended to never implement a project without piloting it first. A pilot study is a mini version of a full case study. Although a pilot study is not a guarantee that your main study will be successful, it does increase the likelihood of success. A pilot study will help among many other things to 1. Check the appropriateness of your questions. Do your study enumerators understand the study questions in a similar manner? Does the respondent correctly interpret the questions? Two, test the correctness of instructions. Do all enumerators understand the instructions in the same way? Three, it also provides better information on whether the type of survey is effective in fulfilling the purpose of the study. Practically speaking, Pilot survey save financial resources because if errors are found in the questionnaire or interview early on, there will be a lesser chance of unreliable results or worse. That could lead to the start of the study all over. The recommendation is to have 10% of your actual sample size as a sample size for your pilot. But in more informal cases, a convenient sample could be used. Prior to the pilot phase, teams were trained on key aspects of the study. Study objectives, selection of households, study questionnaire, pilot study, etc. An important thing to never ignore is to go through the study questionnaire question by question with the teams. It is a tedious but quite rewarding exercise. After completion of the training and necessary briefings, which lasted two days, Teams were now sent to the field to collect information as they would do in an actual survey. We did an external and undeclared pilot study in which respondents in the pilot were not included in the main survey analysis and the respondents are not told the pilot was a test. 
Each team was asked to interview at least 10 households and both enumerators and supervisors acted as numerators during this phase. The correction or modification phase is the phase in which you make changes based on findings from the pilot study. After the pilot study by the teams in the field, we had a debriefing session where each team was asked to present their challenges in using the tools. This permitted certain things to happen. One, clarify teams on questions in which they had challenges during the pilot and on how to ask them. Two, make some changes to our forms. Three, restructure teams. In teams that we observed both enumerators were weak, we substituted one of the weak enumerators with a strong enumerator from another team. Elsewhere, we ensured that team supervisors were those who had a better understanding of the questions in the questionnaire, as well as a better manipulation of the smartphones. Four, we had a look of our data set to be sure that the analysis from it could answer the research questions. This is the phase in which we actually implement our study in the study sites. Usually, there is no need to panic during the implementation phase, especially after a well-conducted pilot study. However, here are a couple of things we did on a daily basis. One, we got up early and made sure that all teams had arrived the kickoff point by the given time. In our case, departure was set at 7.30 a.m. and so all teams had to arrive by 7 a.m. Two, we ensured with the help of team supervisors that all teams had all the required documents and resources they need in the field for that day. We ensured every team member knows where he or she is going to and by what means of transportation. All teams were to stand by their means of transportation every morning. On a daily basis, we gave a motivational and feedback speech to team members. This boosted their morale. We even had a song. We visited teams in the field to see how they are working. The trick here is to encourage them without spending too much time because your presence as the project coordinator scares some of them. We welcome our teams each time they came back from the field while appreciating their work. Even if we found errors, we corrected each person individually. If we had to make an open communication about an error, we make sure we are anonymous. Team members get more experience as time goes on, but also become more tired. Gestures like this, although simple, keeps them going. I will conclude by saying that designing a wonderful form is important, but it is not the only thing to consider when planning your mobile data collection project. The success of a mobile data collection project goes beyond just having a beautifully well-designed form. Thanks for accompanying us through this course on mobile data collection using the Kobo toolbox. Next week, we will be starting a new course on converting paper-based data to electronic data using API data. Until then, stay safe. Bye-bye.